Um, I think today's most underreported story is the return of people power. Um, up until pretty recently, um, it was considered pretty naive, naive to be talking about people power, um, at, at least for a younger generation. Um, you know, people power was kind of something that was seen in history, um, you know, like long, long ago in the 60s. Um, but uh, but it's, a, it's seen as like this naive kind of uh, golden era sort of thing that doesn't really exist anymore. Um, you know, I was born the year that Ronald Reagan took office. And, and the, the reality, the paradigm throughout my lifetime had always been uh, that, that corporations have power um, and that people don't. Um, and there's nothing ordinary people can do that really makes a difference. Um, and that we just have to accept um, this path that the corporations are sending us down. And we might be able to change some things on the margin, um, but, but ultimately we don't really have any power. Um, and it was considered silly to believe otherwise. Um, and then pretty rapidly, that, that paradigm has, has flipped. Um, and, and suddenly it's, uh, it's naive to deny people power. Um, it's, it's naive to think that people can't make a difference in their society. Um, and, and that by joining together, people can't have influence over any institution. Um, and, and I think that's a, a dramatic shift that we're only beginning to see the, the impacts of. Um, and, and we've seen some of the early expressions of that, that paradigm shift. Um, with things like the Occupy movement, um, where people are kind of experimenting with with people power and and reconnecting uh, with what people power looks like and how we want to wield that um, and how it can be structured, um, but I think we're still pretty early on in that in that process and in that shift, um, and and I think over the next few years we'll continue to see uh, new iterations of, of what people power can look like in the world um, and, uh, and what kind of goals people power can work towards and achieve. Um, and, uh, and I think that's, I think that part of that story is also connected to um, the, the rise in uh, coercion and secrecy by, by the top of our power structure, um, and, and particularly our government, um, that I think they're also seeing that, that rise in people power that's emerging right now. Um, and, you know, I look at a lot of what the government and uh, the corporations uh, that have so much influence over the government are, are doing right now, and, and a lot of it is, is desperate acts. Um, there's a lot of desperation, I think, in, in corporate America and in the top of our power structure right now um, because they see that people are suddenly believing in people power again. Um, and they realize that um, that spells the end of, of their control. Um, I, think, uh, I think a lot of folks at the top of that power structure understand that their only tool, their only weapon, is fear. Um, and they've been able to hold people in check for a long time. Um, through, through the power of fear um, and, and the power of alienation. Um, and now those tools are no longer working, those weapons are no longer working uh, to the extent that they were um, because people are resisting that alienation uh, with community building and, and they're resisting that fear with empowerment. Um, and, and I think that's something that is gonna have huge impacts over the course of our lifetime.